Rain Over Water, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to add meshes to your character. So a few things to note before this video starts. This specific tutorial is going to add a mesh to your character when you join the game, a specific mesh, because that's basically just like the, the sample that I'm giving you guys. If you wanted to do something else, you're going to have to figure out how to do that yourself, because that's not what this tutorial- this, this tutorial is not to teach you how to implement it into your game, it's just to the tutorial is going to, to help you add the mesh to your character. Feel free to ask me any questions that you have in the comments. However, if you ask me something like, how do I code this specific thing? Um, I'm not going to be happy with you because I'm not here to code for you. I'm here to teach you guys how to do something that's oddly specific. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the function that starts once your character is added to the game. Now there's multiple ways that you can do this. You can go into starter player and put it in starter character scripts, but we're not going to be doing that today. We're just going to be using a script that's in server script service. So we're going to start with game dot players. And then this next part, this one is called player added. And this is something that fires when a player is added to the players list, which is right here. And then you type connect after something like that. And then we have parentheses, okay. And since this is a function, we're going to write function. Then after that, add more parentheses. And in the parentheses, you're going to type player. Now, you can type whatever you want right here. Like, if you wanted to type, like, I don't know, sp spaghetti, okay. Um, basically, all this is, is it's a variable. So it doesn't exactly matter what you type here, as long as it's not the name of something that you already have. Or that's already a thing but we're gonna make it player just so that it's easier to remember it by because this what this is going to do is this variable is going to store the player that just joined so you could name it whatever you want but for simplicity we're naming it player enter right there and you want to make sure that this parenthesis here is added to the end of well end because we're not using starter character scripts we're going to do player dot character added wait and what this is going to do is it's going to wait until the character of the player adds before it goes through the rest of the script and then after that, we're going to add another weight, but we're just going to add weight. And the reason why we're adding this weight here is because when I was testing the script earlier, um, it wasn't working unless I put a weight there. So I don't know why this is in there, but for some reason, it just needs to wait a tiny bit longer. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a variable. So we're going to start with local. And then this next part is going to be the name of your variable. So for this, I'm going to call it script clone because of what we're going to do. Now we're going to exit out of that. And what you want to do is you want to get the mesh that you're going to clone. And for this, we're going to be using this one, and I'm going to rename it Skirt. And it's very important that you remember what you name it by, but you can always check it back. And we're going to put it in replicated storage, and you'll notice that it just kind of disappears. Uh, we're also going to make it so that you can't collide with the mesh. This will work even if you do put can collide, but for this specific mesh, I don't want it colliding with, any with anything else, so we're just going to put can collide. Now we're going to find, so, so the Skirt clone, this variable is going to hold this, so we need to find this with a script. And in order to do that, we're going to do game dot replicate storage, and then the name of whatever you're cloning. So for this, it's just going to be skirt. And then we're going to type clone. So now that we have our skirt cloned, it's in replicated storage, but it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there in replicated storage. So what we want to do is we want to set the parent of the skirt to the player. And in order to do that, we're first going to type the name of the variable, and then we're going to set, then we're going to do type dot parent because we're changing the parent equals player or whatever variable that you have in here dot character. And this part is important. Okay, so when your player joins the game, basically the variable here is talking about this thing right here, player. And this isn't in the workspace, so there's not doesn't have what we need. It just has like things like GUI and player scripts and yeah this stuff for that stuff that we don't need right now so if we go do player.character it'll get this player the player that's in the workspace we're going to use the upper torso for this one um you can use the head if you have something like a hat or something i don't recommend using humanoid root part because it won't it'll just stay in a straight line basically it's not gonna look right it doesn't it won't look like it's connected to the character basically so we're going to use upper torso okay so now that the parent's set um, we're gonna want to change the position of where the skirt is because if you look right now The position is right here when we clone it. We're gonna change the C frame of it So we're gonna type the name of the variable and then we're gonna change the C frame property So we're gonna type C frame make sure the C and the F are capitalized because remember Lua is case sensitive equals 
player dot character dot upper torso dot c frame so now we've cloned the skirt and we set it to we set its parent to the upper torso and now it's going to be in the same place as the upper torso so let's join the game now, I don't know if you guys saw that, but in case you didn't, what happened was we joined the game and the skirt, it was connected to our upper torso, but it wasn't, it didn't stay there. It kind of just fell off. And then since, it's, since it can't collide with anything, it fell through the map. And now you may be wondering why the heck did that happen? And the reason why that happened is because it's not connected to the character. And you can't just anchor it to fix that because then your character won't be able to move. So we need to find another solution to that. And that solution is welds. So... First things first, we need to create a weld. We're going to start with a variable. So we're going to type local, and I'm going to call it new weld for the sake of simplicity, and then instance dot new. Okay, this will create something new. And then parentheses, and we want quotation marks. Now we're going to type what we want to create, and we want to create a weld. So we're going to type weld. Go to the end, enter. Now we need to set the parent of this weld. So newl.parent equals player dot character dot upper torso. Now the thing about welds is you need a part zero and you need a part one. So the part zero is basically the part that you're starting with and the part one is what you're going to connect it to. You have a purple piece of paper, okay, and you put glue on the purple paper. The purple paper is the part zero. Now you have also have pink paper. And so then you take the pink paper and you touch it together with the purple paper and now you have two pieces of paper that are stuck together. But the pink paper is the part one. <laughs> I hope that analogy was good. <laughs> We're going to set the part zero first. So newl.part zero equals player dot character dot upper torso we're gonna type new l dot part one equals player dot wait hold on no wait that, that's all right don't don't do what i just did um i wasn't thinking okay so the part one is going to be the skirt so we're gonna type skirt clone okay so the skirt is now connected to the character but you may notice that it is in the wrong spot Okay, as you can see, it's kind of a little high up there. We don't want it that high. We want it to be lower. Easy fix for this. Basically, welds have these things called C0. No, it's actually capitalized. C0 and C1. So what these properties are going to do is they're going to teach, they're going to specify where the where the um thing should be placed after it's been welded. New weld dot C0. And again, make sure that the C is capitalized. And you're gonna do C frame dot new then parentheses and we're not gonna use quotation marks because this isn't a string we're just gonna change the numbers I want to show you guys something to help you out with the placement so I'm not gonna type any numbers there and then also you can you can also change the rotation of the mesh that you're using so new well dot c1 equals c frame dot angles zero comma math dot rad because it's circles I actually don't know too much on the specifics of like the math and stuff because I'm not good at math so don't ask me why we use math.red I don't know and then if you type math.red then you can type the angle that you want to turn it to so 180 degrees would turn it all the way around you know 90 degrees would turn it 90 degrees negative 90 degrees would turn it 90 degrees but the other way but you would do that with um x y z for those who don't know x is always red y is always green and z is always blue so if you want to turn the y-axis, then type math.rad in the y-axis spot, which is always in the middle. And then, what do you do? Um, I'm actually going to make it 90 so that you can see the difference. So if you go into view, you'll notice that there's this thing called a command bar. And this command bar allows you to, yeah, allows you to type commands while you're testing. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to game workspace and then you can actually just type your name for this since we're just testing it and this isn't going to be in the final game dot upper wait no i forgot the dot the upper dorso dot weld and then we can change the c0 to whatever we want co dot c0 dot c frame dot new zero negative zero point nine zero and hopefully that'll work Oh, no, did I type it wrong? Oh, okay, I forgot the C0. 
forgot to type z0 before I typed that. Okay, and then we do cframe.new. Okay, that should work. There you go, see? And you can use that to fine tune where everything goes. And then once you have the exact numbers that you want, you can go and edit the script for that. So zero, negative 0 0.8, zero. So if we join the game, you can see that the script is in the right place. And it's also turned the wrong way because I said it that way. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed. If you like this video, remember to like this video, comment what you thought, and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Bye, guys!